And remember I said earlier, your wavelength has to do with your tidal volume. So, or maybe I didn't say that. So now I'm saying it. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families. Bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU dog, and I'm here to talk a little bit about how you choose the settings on the oscillator when you first start out, and then also how do you manage when you get a gas, how do you manage your amplitude, your hertz, can you explain this a little bit? I've gotten a lot of questions, so I want to go ahead and get to that right now. Make sure you stick to the end, because at the end I'm actually going to go ahead and give you these settings you probably want to start a baby with. A extremely low birth weight baby, and a full-term sick baby, okay? So make sure you watch to the end so you can have somewhat the magic numbers that will help you to start these two extremes of babies in the NICU. All right, let's get to today's video. So one setting that you have to work with is your mean airway pressure. The mean airway pressure is essentially what is the mean pressure that would be in the whole sort of respiratory uh, you know, pipes from the trachea all the way down to the alveolus. And again, it doesn't mean that the settings that you put in on the oscillator is exactly what's gonna be translated directly into the alveolus because there's a whole lot of different kind of lung mechanics that need to happen. But essentially that's the setting that you would put and it will trickle down into the alveolus. Now you have your mean airway pressure, then you also have your amplitude and your amplitude is essentially saying, okay, if I have a mean airway pressure of 10, but I am oscillating, well, that's a wave. And so how do you oscillate around that wave? What is the highest peak of that wave is your amplitude. And your amplitude basically controls your tidal volume. If you have a really high peak, then you're gonna have a larger tidal volume, assuming you're not changing the hertz. And we'll get to that right now. If this is the first time hearing about the oscillator, I do have a video on the oscillator you can check out here. I also have a video between the difference between an oscillator and a jet ventilator, which is another type of ventilator that we use for high frequency. If you haven't seen those at the end of this video, of course, go back and check those out. All right, let's move on to the next topic. So Hertz essentially gives you an idea of how long is that wavelength from peak to peak. If you have really high Hertz, it's actually the opposite. So Hertz is equal to one over wavelength or wavelength is equal to one over Hertz. Essentially, if you have very high Hertz, you'll have a much lower wavelength meaning it gets shorter. This is easier if you think about it visually. If you have a really long wavelength, like so, this is really long, then the hertz are gonna be very low. If you have high hertz, then your wavelength is gonna be more like this. There's gonna be much shorter peak to peak distance than if you have low hertz, which is a longer peak to peak distance. Okay, enough of the physiology. What does this actually mean for my patient? What does it mean to the oscillator? What it means is that actually one hertz is equal to 60 breaths a minute. So the higher the hertz, the more breaths you're giving to the baby. So if we have a baby on the oscillator and you put 15, the baby will actually be getting 900 breaths a minute. Now, how does this affect the baby? Well, hertz, it affects the CO2 release, okay? CO2 release. The higher the hertz, the lower the ability to blow off your CO2. If you need to stop this and go back, go ahead and do it now. Stop, go back, hear it again. The higher the hertz, the lower the ability to blow off your CO2. You back? Okay, so again, I will reiterate. Low hertz means your ability to blow off CO2 is actually better, okay? 
So think about those two situations I just put. All right, so let's actually have a scenario. So you have a baby whose CO2 may be 80. You obviously don't want an 80. So you started out at hertz of, let's say 12. If you have a CO2 of 80, I want you to stop for a second. You have a CO2 of 80, you need to blow off CO2. What would you do with the hertz? Would you wanna go up or would you wanna go down? Now stop if you need to think about it Come back when you're ready with the answer. Okay, you came back. So what essentially you would want to do, as I mentioned before, if you lower your hertz, you improve the ability to blow a CO2. So if you were on hertz of 12 and you have a CO2 of 80, you would probably want to go to 11, maybe even 10. I wouldn't go jump more than two spots, but you can jump off one spot down two spots. In this case, if you really need to blow off the CO2, I personally would probably go down by one from 12 to 11 see what your gas is and I'll explain why in a second so the going down on the Hertz what does this mean let's go back to physics again if you went down on your Hertz you actually lengthened the distance between your peak to peak your wavelength and remember I said earlier your wavelength has to do with your tidal volume so or maybe I didn't say that so now I'm saying it your wavelength peak to peak has to do with your tidal volume. And so if you have a longer wavelength, you have a better ability to blow off CO2. You measure the area under the curve. And so if you have longer wavelengths, we went down from 12 to 11, so your hertz went lower, you extended your wavelength, you now have a better ability to blow off CO2. And what's different about the mechanical ventilator is that on high frequency, your ability to blow off CO2, now we're going back to math, we've done physics, we've done physiology, we're going to math now. Your ability to blow off CO2 is actually your tidal volume squared. So let me explain this. If on conventional mechanical ventilator, you go from a rate of 20 and you double that and you go to a rate of 40, you're doubling the rate, you're doing a factor of one to one, you are doubling by two. So going from 20 to 40. So that means your ability to blow CO2 is also essentially doubling. Okay, but as I mentioned, you're going by a factor of two, so you are doubling the ability to blow CO2. That does not mean that if your CO2 was 80, that you're gonna now go by half down to 40. If we were pipes, maybe that would work, but we're human beings and there are lung mechanics involved in that. So it won't go, come down directly by half if you increase the ability to blow off CO2 by two. Hopefully you get this. I know I was through a little mathematics there. So if you're having problems with that, just go back, listen to it again. That's a great thing about videos. You can pause it, go back, hear it again. So, you know, do what you need to do. Now, what actually happens with high frequency ventilation? I mentioned that your tidal volume squared is your ability to blow CO2 on high frequency. Let's just imagine that you're able to determine exactly your tidal volume and you now increase that tidal volume by a factor of two. Of course, we can't because of all these mechanics, we can't really tell what the tidal volume is. But let's say we were getting, you know, 0.025 and we now double that to 0.05. If we had the ability to double our tidal volume, on high frequency, the ability to blow of CO2 is squared. So we doubled the tidal volume, but our ability to blow of CO2 went up by a factor of four. So using that same example, if we went from a tidal volume of 0.025 to 0.075, we have now tripled our tidal volume, which means we have now increased our ability to blow off CO2 by three squared or nine times. This is why we have to be a little bit more careful when we're dealing on high frequency with the Hertz. When you go down by one or two values, you don't really know exactly how that's affecting the tidal volume. And so if you jump too quickly, you may blow off CO2 too quickly which obviously is actually not good to go below what you want to be. For preemies, you really want to avoid being hypocapnic because this, this can actually affect 
their brain development. So you have to be very careful not to go too low. And that's why there's a little bit of fear out there on how to manage the uh, oscillator or jet ventilation because it does so good at being able to blow off CO2, especially the oscillator, that some people fear we drop too low, that can cause you know brain problems intracranial hemorrhage, intraventricular hemorrhage, things like that, or poor neurodevelopmental outcome. But again, that's where you have to really be careful how you manage these machines. Some of the same things can happen on conventional ventilator uh, if you don't manage them appropriately, okay? So one final thing, the amplitude I touched on earlier, and I mentioned the amplitude has to do with your tidal volume, and again, the ability to blow off CO2. In this case, the tidal vol volume, if you increase your amplitude, you're increasing your tidal volume, just like we talked about with Hertz, where you're increasing your actual wavelength or the base of that peak. If you increase that with Hertz, you're gonna blow up more CO2. Well, the amplitude is if you increase your amplitude, you're gonna blow off more CO2. What you have to be very careful is the more amplitude you have, the more you're oscillating outside of whatever mean airway pressure you set. Let me explain myself. If you set a mean airway pressure 10, the idea of being gentler on high frequency ventilation is that you don't wanna be stretching the whole lung too much because ultimately it will then change into what is a conventional ventilator, right? Which is stretching the lungs each time. But now you would be doing it 900, 700, you know, whatever you know, no, uh, frequency you have. So that would cause a whole lot of damage. So you have to be careful not to go too high on the peaks because then it would cause lung damage. So most people want to use a ratio. You want to keep that ratio of your mean or pressure to your amplitude at one to two to one to three. Once you start going above one to three ratios on your mean or pressure to amplitude, then you run the risk of causing damage. If you go too low below one to two, then you run into the risk of actually atelectasis. You're not oscillating, your, your amplitudes are not good enough to be able to maintain that mean air pressure. So you may actually have little micro atelectasis happening and then obviously desats with that. What do I mean by the one to two, one to three ratio? Use an example. So mean air pressure of 10, you don't wanna go uh, above the amplitude of 30 if you can avoid it. But what happens if you have to blow off to CO2, you're dropping your hertz, you can't get rid of CO2, you're going up on your amplitude and now you're 10 and you wanna go up to 35, you wanna go up to 40. In that case, you go up on your mean airway pressure. You may actually need to open up the lungs to be able to blow off better CO2. So let's say you would wanna go up to 36 in your amplitude, well then jump on your mean airway pressure to 11. If that doesn't work, go up to 12. That gives you the ability now to go up on your amplitude even as high as 36. And again, around that one, two, three, if you need to go up a little bit higher and it, and it works and the baby's safe and, and it's not you know, causing too much damage, then, then at that point, you gotta do what you do. Um, so, you know, that sometimes you just have to do those, those kind of things. They are obviously extreme. Some, some babies are extremely, uh, extremely, extremely sick and you have to go to the extremes of our event management. Okay, with all that, I hope that was, you know, a nice little, you know, overview of how to manage your oscillator. Thank you for those that stuck around till the end because I'm going to go ahead and tell you what are the kind of settings you would want to start on the oscillator. And of course, this depends on your gestational age. It depends on, you know, how old you are. It depends the, on the illness. So, you know, it's not a clear cut. These are the numbers and the matching numbers will work every time. You obviously need to, you know, get a, it, I think medicine is like cooking. You need to, you know, have your recipe, but then obviously go around that uh, to add a little bit of pepper here, a little bit of salt here, and you'll come up with the best dish ever. Same thing with, with medicine in general, but when it comes to vent management, it's like that. So here are the numbers. Your mean air pressure, you want to be about two points above what your mean air pressure was when you were on mechanical ventilation, if that's what you were on. Uh, NIV is a little bit different, but you know, you could extrapolate and use some of those numbers. So let's say on mechanical ventilator, uh, you are reaching mean airway pressures. You can see the numbers there. You're reaching mean airway pressures of maybe 16, 17, 18. At that point, let's say 18, you would wanna go ahead and start on the oscillator at 20. Hopefully you're not seeing 18s on uh, conventional. Those are pretty high numbers, especially if they're preemies. But again, you may have a very sick uh, preemie or, or, or uh, a child, and so you have to do that. So you'd wanna go two points above that. 
how do you regulate your amplitude? Your amplitude, you regulate it on the jiggle, on the wiggle. However, you guys, you know, tell me if there's a different term that you guys use in your hospital. Add it to the comment section. I'd really like to know what other terms you guys use. We use uh, jiggle. Uh, some people use wiggle, and you know, there's probably a different terms for, for these things. But um, you want to go ahead and have a good, you know, a jiggle, wiggle, uh, really kind of down uh, above the umbilicus and above. If you're moving the legs and the hands with your wiggle, it may be too much. You might want to come down. But again. There are some sick babies that you just have to do what you have to do to keep them alive, and you know I have I have been uh, I had to do that in some cases. Okay, so and then your your hertz is sort of the same idea. With the hertz, you want to start as high as possible because that means it's the lowest tidal volume, which means the less volume trauma. Uh, to the lungs and decreases the risk of chronic lung disease. So if you've got a preemie baby, very small, you want to start at a hertz of 50. Okay, so let's talk about that. Preemie baby, I would probably start again two points above. Usually you're starting on your mean airway pressure uh, with an ex with an extremely low preemie baby at around 10, 11, maybe 12 on your mean airway pressure. That's putting you usually, if you can start at your amplitude, about anywhere from 25 to 30. Again, looking at what the baby's jiggle is and then your hertz, you start at 15. And then you get your gas. Now you wanna wait a few minutes before that regulates. So you wanna wait a little bit, you get your gas, you get your chest X-ray, make sure you're not over expanding. If you're over expanding, you wanna bring down your mean airway pressure. If your CO2, if you're holding on or you're accumulating too much CO2, then you've gotta regulate either your amplitude, if you have, if you're, if you're not seeing a ton of wiggle, if you're just jiggling like crazy and you know jumping off the bed, then the amplitude is probably not what you wanna to play with then you come down on your hertz and you would come down by one at each point if you've got a term baby maybe HIE maybe pulmonary hypertension unfortunately maybe you know maybe cooling and things like that uh, then you probably want to start at a higher mean airway pressure you'd probably start at about 15 uh, because obviously bigger chest there's a you know, rest restriction there as well if you've got a sick child uh, with sepsis on and so forth so you probably want to start at, at least at 12 uh, it sounds like you know anywhere from 12 to 15 would probably be a starting number which you know probably means your amplitude you're starting around the 30s uh, low 30s i would start maybe at 30 for those type of babies and then hertz again most likely you probably won't be able to start at 15 because those are re really small tidal volumes and if the baby's sick enough you're gonna have to probably blow off co2 uh, if co2 is not a problem they definitely start at 15 but I suspect if you've got a sick child, your CO2 is going to be elevated. So you'd probably be starting at around 12 to 13 and then working up or down depending on your gas. Okay, so hopefully that was uh, great. I hope you really enjoyed the whole video. Please, please, if you have any other questions on any of the things that we talked about, add them to the comment section. Uh, if there's other videos you want me to go ahead and do, I would be more than happy to do so. Add them also in the comment section. Like, if you haven't done so already, please please subscribe and you know I really hope I, I do this for you guys I really hope you enjoy it and I'll do you know more if, if that's what you guys want to do and again suggestions always always welcome thank you again uh, thank you for doing what you guys do with those babies and keeping them safe and I will you know see you with the next video